Hello Captains, this is Papa Nicolis. Welcome back to our newest episode of the Majestic Hive Hound. Rod Pilsi will be your host for this long journey. Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Back to Port for World of Warships. Now featuring our favorite, the Hive Hound. How are you doing Hive? Thank you for coming. Ah, oh, I'm doing pretty well. Thanks for asking. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, let's kick it off at the very beginning and let's say, and let me ask you, where did the Hive Hound start? How did this idea come to you to start it with the name, the logo? Please explain a bit more about that. The Hive Hand, it's, it goes back to like Call of Duty, which I'm kind of embarrassed to admit I used to play a bit too much. And uh, it was a, 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 we were pub stompers. We'd like to imagine that we were like a competitive clan, but in all fairness, like we did do some clan battles, which we were pretty good at, but the majority of the time was spent uh, pub stomping so the hive the idea that the name the hive was basically a, a collective working together to benefit all uh, so it basically is just an analogy for a team that works for each other as opposed to you know I want to get 47 kills this game and sod everyone else you know so um, that's where the the hive part comes from so that's essentially it's a it's a really old clan tag um the hound uh part came from black ops of call of duty in all fairness and that was um i had an affinity for getting dogs uh most games and very very cheesily i used to put on my best mr burns accent and say, uh, Smithers, release the hounds. I'm not going to do the Mr. Burns accent because it's really embarrassing. <laughs> but uh, that's where that's where the hound came from. So the hive hound. Um, so sort of black and yellow with the colours. And to be honest with you, I've had it for so long. Everyone has known me as the hive hound in gaming for sort of years or, you know, back in... You know, I don't, can't remember how long ago Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 was out, but all the way through Destiny and everything, so I've, I've just never changed it. Yeah, why? <laughs> You're so well known for being the high found why change? <laughs> well, if, if we look at all your streams and the things that you do, you always, you kind of, uh, you know, low, not always bragging, no big mouthing, uh, simple and straight. Tell us a bit more about your stream life. I don't know. Uh, to be honest, that's actually like a, a hard one. Um, like, I yeah, I I'd like to think I'm a pretty good player, but I guess it's down to my my mental my mentality has always been the same with gaming. It's like you can always learn more, you can always get better. So it doesn't matter how good or how bad anyone is, you can always improve. And I like to take that on board myself. Like, how can I go out there? and as a as a community contributor and you know tell people how to play and how to get better if i'm not willing to do the same myself so i don't know it, i am a competitive person but you know sort of as for sort of being braggy and brash and you know insulting my team when they <laughs> they, they they do dumb stuff when you know i think wow they could be learning they they could be watching me and trying to improve and, you know, making mistakes, which all of us do. So, I don't know, I'm just, I'm a bit laid back that way. <laughs> well, let's look at the uh, the favourite streamers of people. Who are these big people that you hang with? Right, so people that I, that I hang with, uh, there's this there's there's guy called Rogue, uh, you might have heard of him. Uh, he does a podcast. Play my, my relax games, like Ark with him quite a bit. In all fairness, um, but obviously um, anyone who's watched my streams or um, sort of knows, I you know I, I do I pl I'll play with uh, the likes of Spartan Elite, uh, Chili, Zarkoon. I've done some collaborations with T Bull and stuff. So, but in all fairness, like in my sort of spare time, I really like watching a lot of smaller channels um, because their engagement with the audience is sort of better because you know you can and that's something I actually miss about being like a small channel 
like a year ago as opposed to now so it's like uh, Blademeister and Hitman uh, Hitman 6064 on Twitch uh, those guys are really entertaining um, I like Juice the Goose for his memes uh, Chronic Crow Clouds is another one um, I enjoy watching his streams they're pretty fun uh, Envy Retro is a good one and yeah like I said I, I spend more time I probably spend more of my time looking at smaller channels um, than I do watching all of the big ones um, which is weird obviously I do support all the other CCs and watch their stuff and work with them but I, I like getting involved with the smaller ones and having chats with them and like it's it's just that that engagement which I try to do as much as I can but it, it, it gets seemingly more and more difficult as the days go by yeah of course if you you, you grow so big uh, you have to <laughs> well let's look at you you being a CC for all the warships um, how do you feel this has helped you uh, in bringing your audience uh, you know a bit of clear clarity about the game itself uh, to be honest with you, having that direct line to the community team um, is is good um, I have a section on my discord channel and stuff whereas if people have a you know a particular sort of like a direct question that they want to ask me or ask wargame and I can you know I, I check it very regularly and having that connection so if there's if there's something weird like the for example you can't put permanent camo on the conqueror at the moment like it's it's a known bug and i didn't know about it because i haven't unlocked the Con conqueror myself yet but like having that ability to go oh uh, hey wargaming guys uh, there seems to be an issue with this is this an issue or is there a workaround for it and uh, i've also used my powers for good to help people get back premium ships and things like that that they've accidentally sold um so as a benefit for me i i don't know i would have bought all the ships anyway i was doing that long before i became a cc but as a benefit to uh my community i, I try to use try to use the powers vested in me for good <laughs> yeah i i need some good people in my life as well so i might be calling upon you in the future not a problem at all. Any time. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Let's look at uh, streaming versus video on demand. Which do you prefer? Um, that's that's a tricky one because most people, I think you'll see, they either do videos or they stream. Like not many people. Uh, it's it's tough trying to decide between streaming and videoing. That's kind of I started off on Twitch because I really liked streaming. But I made a couple of videos and then I made the, the move to sort of YouTube and focused all my content on, on YouTube instead because I can I can do the both. So uh, like streaming, I love streaming because I get to engage with the audience. Um, it's my fault um, all the other wargaming, you know, anyone else who streams World of Warships Legends probably gets asked for countdowns because of me uh, because I... Um, I started doing that pretty much from the beginning on what right okay well you know let, like let's get involved let's see if we can get on the team or on enemy teams and, and fight each other uh, but it's the engagement of streaming I love but um, to be honest with you, ever since I've done my first video uh, on Bull of Warships um, I quite enjoy the editing I find it quite relaxing and it's quite cool when you put some some nice clips together with some fancy transitions and uh, and it allows you also to have that hindsight in matches so I can say well I've done this right because of this but if I'd you know I could have done better because you see things that you might have missed in the heat of battle and, and I think it helps me become a bit of a better player when I'm scrutinizing my own work <laughs> so so they're both equally as good <laughs> I think is what I'm trying to say I know for sure you're playing PlayStation and Xbox now let's 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 do a difficult question. Which one do you prefer? That is an awful question. <laughs> the, um, so PSN is my my main account. It's my main console. It's you know I've, I've pretty much you know I, I grew up with PlayStation One, PlayStation Two. I think I then switched to Xbox and 360, and then came back to the the PlayStation Four. Um, but uh, why I play on the two? Because there's there's no need to. I'm you know I'm, I'm a CC, so I've got my main CC account on the PS4 that has everything. 
but I play on the X on the Xbox because I play it as a free to play account, so I know what it's like to grind without having premium time and without having premium ships and everything like that. So I, I do that to hope it keeps me balanced. Um, in all fairness, obviously the PS4 is my main console. In your own view, what would you feel is your main ship, the main ship type that you use, your preferred style to play as well? Ah, as for main ships, um, I had a look at I looked at this the other day, and I've got like come up to eight thousand battles, and my most played ship is the Sean Horse with like three hundred battles. That's like what my like two and a half, maybe three percent of my total battles played. Um, so I don't really have um, a favourite ship class uh, style is is aggressive um, I'm always always aggressive always sort of making the push and you know sometimes it works out and as people see on my streams sometimes it really really doesn't um, but yeah I don't have a I genuinely don't have a preferential class it it all depends it all depends on my mood um, if I want a challenge I'll, I'll pick a cruiser because I think cruisers particularly the tier 6 cruisers are in a bit of a rough spot when they come up against tier 7 battleships uh, for sure so cruisers are when I want to be sweaty and sort of try hard um, battleships are kind of a bit more in my opinion a bit more fun because they're a bit more forgiving you can you can do a bit more silly plays because you've got all that extra armor and uh dds when i when i just want to watch the world burn <laughs> now you're talking my language i know people will hate me for it because i've got like 600 battles in my atlanta it's like almost it's 10 percent of my games that i've played you filthy filthy hitchy spammer you <laughs> oh I, I just called the golden rainbow well it, the game has now basically been two years old and carriers has been included. There's been buffs. There's been nerfs. What do you feel that War Game, War Gaming could have done in these two years that they've not done? Um, what could they have done mm -hmm. that they haven't? Honestly, for me, and I, I genuinely think the the whole clan wars and clan battles is is the big thing it's missing because. Probably, there's there's no real super sweaty competitive mode and I think that's something a lot of the community are, are sort of are sort of crying out for it's definitely something that I'd like to see and all right it doesn't affect 99% of players um, but the training room as well being able to set specific shots up for uh, for videos and things would from my point of view would be absolutely awesome um, but the fact that that you can't kind of sucks <laughs> for me a little bit. So I think those those two things, the training room and and sort of introducing the clan battles and clan wars. But they have said they're doing it, clan battles and uh, cl clans and clan battles are supposed to be coming next year. I believe they said they would do on their stream. I could be wrong. Please don't shout at me if I am. <laughs> but it seems they're they're definitely making progress in in the right direction. How do you feel about the carriers at the moment? Honestly, uh, with the carriers, I, th I think it's still too soon to really, really tell. They've they've clearly changed the game in a big way. Um, you're finding a lot more of the. Some people call it the black hole defense. I prefer the term lemon train, where they all sort of stick together. Um, everyone pushes down one flank, and it's the team. That, that abuses that and sets up the crossfires that win and they don't just win they just devastate the enemy team you know you're when you're on the right side of it you've lost maybe one or two ships as as their last ship is going down and it's just something i think the the player base is going to have to learn to sort of get over because the way i look at it at least anyway is before if you were spotted you knew something was probably going to be shooting at you whereas now if you're spotted you're spotted by the plane half your team spotted so are you actually being targeted um are you actually having someone actively sort of aiming at you um 
so I don't know. I think it's I think it's too early to tell because um, you can see when you've got a team when you've got a good carrier player that's spotting and and you know you're keeping the DD spotted. It's the teams taking advantage of that and killing the DDs early. You know some teams do, some teams don't. Some carriers don't bother keeping destroyers spotted, and I think it's really is like a good CV player will massively benefit the team but it doesn't matter how good they are if the team doesn't take advantage of what they're doing so i don't know it's i think it it needs a couple of months for the, the player base to sort of i don't know mature sounds like an offensive word but it's i don't mean it is in a bad way it's just they sort of need to get used to carriers what carriers can do and and how they can use carriers to the benefit of their team because Without rocket attack planes, they can't really kill DDs, so they're they're reliant on you. And DDs have always been the the sort of stro I think the strongest class for winning games, in my own personal opinion. So I don't know. <laughs> I think it's too early to tell, but I think as a as a ship class themselves, they they're pretty balanced. They don't do insane amounts of damage. They are weak to destroyers and. Cruiser HE. If you see a carrier fire HE, not armor piercing HE, citadels the crap out of them. Top tip from the hive hand there. That one's free. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy I don't have to pay for that. Well, I did you a favor as well, and actually, uh, we gathered some community questions as well. So, again, guys, don't hate me if I get your name wrong. Uh, Ziggy. 4001 hey hive how do you balance your family life and world of warships gaming in general have you got any tips on this um i have actually and that's genuinely i was keeping an eye on the uh on the reddit post and i seen that question i was like what like that's genuinely a good question and uh probably something a a, a lot of people who subscribe to my channel to have as well so it's it's probably good information to have so well, the main thing is, is family should always come first, like 100% of the time. Um, so I've done things, uh, whereas I used to stream at like 7, I've changed it to half past 8 now to help match the the pattern, the sleep pattern of, of my twins, because I've got twins. So if you think one's hard to balance, try doing it with two of them. Um, so I, I definitely don't get to game um, as much as I did before their arrival. So, you know focus on when you're playing like definitely like maximize the the fun you're having because if you're not having fun and relaxing whilst playing there's there's no point because life with children especially young children is particularly stressful um i honestly think i'm kind of blessed uh, that my wife's quite forgiving and quite understanding uh <laughs> about my hobby um the i actually use this line on her when she said you game too much and i went well at least i'm sitting in the other room playing games and i'm not out drinking or doing a, any other manner of unscrupulous things and she kind of went well yeah that actually makes sense <laughs> and my hobby kind of means that you know i'm always around you know i'm not out, off out playing sports i'm not going on tour with the rugby boys like i used to do in my young days i'm i'm in my i'm in my office and uh, I don't know, probably the most important tip is um, make sure like you take the time to balance your time for gaming or in my case, gaming and you know making YouTube videos or streaming uh, with my wife or, or your partner's time for relaxing and socializing. Um, you basically you've, you've, you've got to show them you've got to make sure they know that them letting you have that time is appreciated and they'll gain more appreciation for it whereas as if you just go all right the kids in bed i'm gonna play and she's left looking after the kids then she's just gonna get annoyed with you but i try to uh actively get my wife to uh, she i've made her set up a group with her friends on uh, whatsapp and they call each other every uh, every wednesday and have a chat so she gets that socialization and that interactions that i get when i'm playing so she understands like particularly in these current climate situation times 
uh, she gets to have that same interaction and fun with people when you know the majority of us can't so she appreciates that time and um, you know understands she also understands why i enjoy sort of playing and how de-stressing it is despite me screaming at the tv on occasions <laughs> You know what's the funny thing? I use that same line on my wife. <laughs> it works 100% pro tip. <laughs> it does. It does help. <laughs> well, here's one. I think it's a statement, more of a statement, but this one made me laugh from Reddit. Bone Freezy. As a first-time father of an eight-month-old, I'm curious about, about this as well. My old lady looks at my play, PlayStation like it's another woman in my life sometimes. The AL Commanders, Azure Lane, didn't help my I'm a history buff argument either. <laughs> well, well, they, they, I, I think that is very much a statement and and I, I completely, I think most of us out there can understand the, the sentiment of the, 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 the wife looking at the playstation as uh, as a as the as the other woman in our lives particularly the, like whenever well you know whenever we're playing together um we're always having fun in our in our parties we're laughing we're joking and i think particularly the, it sort of goes back to the same thing it's like where i mentioned you know make sure your your partner or your wife gets the same time to socialize and have a laugh with her friends because you know, if you're sitting in the other room watching the kids and your other half's in the other room giggling like a like a little schoolgirl, which I do frequently, um, you know, it's it's kind of it, you can you can understand that sort of little bit of a, a jealousy sentiment. So just just make sure she does the same, and, and you'll be good. And yeah, you know, I don't know. Make sure you don't click on. Uh, Azura Lane Sean host whilst uh, she's in the room. Sean host, I'd rather say a targo. I declined to comment just in case my wife hears this. <laughs> See, this is where you're going wrong. <laughs> Dang it, I'm sorry. Zarkin, I'd like to know what about the Aberusi makes it Hive's favourite ship of all time? I see the, the fact that it's Zarkoon as well. I knew someone out there would would, would mention uh, the the ship uh, the ship I once described as uh, as being if it had a lazy eye it would be its only redeeming quality. I I just hate it. I don't love the ship. Absolutely despise the, the Abruzzi. Um, but but I don't know. It just kind of. It just kind of makes an emphasis on actually like the beauty of the game the fact that there are there are ships for everyone there's people no doubt there's i don't know maybe the abruzzi might be a hard one to find anyone who actually likes it uh, but the play styles and everything are, are so different and honestly oh, it's got the lower caliber guns compared to the tech tree it's got the low fire chance it's really good actually against cruisers and dds but up against battleships and particularly with it being a tier 6 cruiser as they get a hard enough time against tier 6 and tier 7 battleships as it is it's with my playstyle of being aggressive I like to get in the face of battleships and top them quite frequently and it's it's not really something you can get away with in the Abruzzi so it just doesn't gel with how I play so I, I just hate it and my subscribers seem to enjoy the pain of putting me through playing it by requesting it all the time. <laughs> Can I make a personal request and ask that you do it the next time you stream the first ship to play? No. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Blaymeister. Hello chaps and hi, thanks for giving us the opportunity to ask direct questions. I spent some time watching potato quality streams of his first experience of Legends yesterday. It was in interesting to see his opinion on the game and DD detectability in particular. Please could you discuss the, the idea that the shorter detection range for DDs on console versus PC makes them much more overpowered line and what 
are your thoughts on changing those detectability values? For example, the Kamikaze can be down as low as 4.2 kilometers. Keep up what you do. Look forward to hearing the podcast. I'm sure there's people out there that have far more experience on the PC than I do, but I did play World of Warships on the PC um, as well. Um, I had a terrible laptop when I started playing it. All the graphics settings were to the lowest, and I was getting 20 frames per second for about a year and a half of trying to play it. Uh, so I, I've got that sort of experience where I've, I've played it on the PC and I've, I've played it on the console, but significantly more on the console, I definitely enjoy the console version uh, more, uh, partly because I think my PlayStation's powerful enough to run it unlike my laptop was. Um, but it's only, um, it's as far as I know, it's only really the, um, the Japanese destroyers that have that significantly reduced um, detectability range. So like on PC, the, the Kagro, I think you can get it down to like 5.4, where I think it's 4.5. Um, whereas you look at something like the Cossack, you can get that down to 5.4 on the PC as well um, as the console. So the, the IGN gunboats definitely have got a big concealment advantage over pretty much everything else. Um, but with the smaller maps and stuff, I think they're quite balanced because usually when you see a kamikaze or a kagero get spotted they're pretty hard focused and they're, they've got no armor their guns are slow they can't really defend against most other destroyers and they tend to get wiped out pretty quickly unless you run a gunboat build on your Yadachi like I do and it can be quite surprising um, but no I, I genuinely think they definitely are stronger but I don't know if I'd call them overpowered because they just die so quickly I mean yeah, if, if you look at the IJ and uh, it kind of should be that they have that extra concealment uh, because yeah they do a lot of damage with their torpedoes but in essence that's what they do that's they their niche is they have to be concealed uh, for the other gunboats like the Fletcher uh, that thing can it can shoot well like, like the German DDs for example like their torps are all right not quite as good as the IGN but they're almost there their torps are pretty good and they can still fire them but their guns are really good and they'd absolutely waste an IGN DD being a couple of salvos so you know i think having that little extra bit of concealment makes them balanced i think if they had the same detection range as a as a as a, a lightning or a fletcher you know they'd they, they'd get absolutely ruined every time they go out <laughs> they they wouldn't be competitive without that that little advantage and it is a little advantage when you're when they're heading towards you they get they get a few seconds notice and they usually can't turn in time to avoid detection either so only the really good sneaky players avoid detection all game and score some significant damage the next question we've got is from soulboy8 and i have to really thank him it's a he's a very good guy i know him i've spoken to him a little uh, previously and he's, he's asking I'd like to know what's Haas' favourite potato dish. Um, my favourite potato dish? Oh, I'll be a dev strike. They're pretty tasty. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> favourite potato dish? Um, genuinely, um, we, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if it's got a proper name. It could be a, a legitimate dish, but we just call it like corned beef, uh, corned beef and potato pie, where you have mashed potatoes imagine i don't just for anyone this i'm going to describe this just in case you don't know what it is so imagine a lasagna but instead of pasta you've got mashed potatoes the main filling is corned beef and where you'd have the white sauce that would be beans and cheese on the top in the oven till the the cheese starts to brown and it's just oh, it's it, it's just it's just home it's a really easy really nice potato dish and 
yeah, apart from that, I think you can consider it a potato dish. <laughs> but yeah, that's my that's my favourite potato dish. Um, if you if you're lucky, I might make a video on me making one and post it on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of making me hungry. <laughs> Sorry, not sorry, because I'm hungry as well now, and I'm going to make myself a corned beef potato pie as soon as we're done. <laughs> oh, there's your recording chance now. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Bigglesworth, 08. Hi, Hive. What could Wargaming add to all the warships that would make you quit your job to play? Like Axis versus Allies, or a ship line that you were not expecting? Um, I, uh, to be honest, I love my job, so... There's, there's absolutely nothing Wargaming could add to make me quit my job because whilst then my hobby would become my job and then it's your job so how do you relax then to you go and work um, but uh, honestly like uh, it wouldn't make me quit my job but it would definitely make me play a lot more is introduction of, of clan battles and honestly I'd love to see them introduce um, operations which are, okay, maybe not the same as they did on PC, but yeah, I'd love to see historical battles that you could that you could reenact in game because we've got most of the ships, um, or at least ships similar enough that they could be a, a fitting replacement in battle to uh, to reenact some uh, some epic fights like Hood versus the Bismarck. I think that's one a lot of people would like to see. Hope it doesn't end the same way as the original, <laughs> particularly uh, being British myself. But yeah, I think I think things like that would be would, would be really amazing additions. But yeah, I wouldn't quit my job. I love my job. I think we can both add on that. Fix the Bismarck. What do you mean, fix the Bismarck? It's always been broken. All right, the guns are awful, but it's it's not about the guns. The biz I look at the Bismarck as it's not a competitive ship, it's just fun. It's fun. Go in there, get close, hit that secondary boost button, watch the fireworks go off and and, and enjoy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I agree, definitely. That's what the ship is best for. But I, I don't know what I'd do if there was a Bismarck that could accurately hit something from range. <laughs> okay, well, uh, Raygun115829 I'd like to know Hive's true opinion on my using the battleships as a riot shield while I play cruisers. Lol. Oh wait, uh, this actually stems from uh, when we were playing arena together, and uh, it, 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 he wasn't in a cruiser; he was in a battleship. And basically, you'd sit behind and and watch everyone else get their damage, get damaged. You basically sit behind them. So although. It's an effective tactic, but uh, for you, but yeah, it's not good play. You need to get in there and share the damage. Use your, your hit points or, or currency, and it's no point in being the last guy alive with full health if you've got to fight three ships when you could be three ships at half health fighting three ships. So um, get good noob. Uh, is <laughs> He'll understand that I'm, I'm, I'm just... It's just friendly banter. <laughs> oh yeah, it's fun. We all we all have that in in the game. I mean, you normally get the hate mail as well. Sometimes I miss the hate mail. I don't seem to get it anymore, and it's it really makes me sad. <laughs> <laughs> Inevitable share, twenty eight forty nine. What ship is the most fun or least fun for you to play, and why? Bonus, if you could name a ship, what would the name be? That's another question. And then the last one. Name one thing that you would like to add to the game and one thing that you would like to remove. So let's look at the ship first. <laughs> What's the fun, the fun one and the least fun one for you to play? All right. The most fun ship in the game, without a doubt, and um, anyone who wants to disagree with me um, can fight me. It's fine. Um, is the party bus, as I've dubbed it, um, also known as the... As the Russian tier four, the Ahotnik. Um, so basically, you've got a recipe of what should be the worst ship in the game. So it's a destroyer with terrible concealment, slow turret traverse, slow firing guns, 
short range torpedoes but it's got a bit of armor and all of those things combined it sh it should be it should be awful um but it can dev strike cruisers um it has so many torpedoes and yeah if you get yourself in between two or even three battleships because you're kind of quick enough sometimes you can get away with it and end up topping two or if not even getting three dev strikes within uh, really close proximity of each other and when you're in those situations you're just like oh my god oh my god oh my god am i gonna get these tops or oh, turn turn come on top tubes get around the other side it really sort of really gets the heart racing to be honest with you it's it's one of those ships you you either you just you just charge in and it, and it, it either goes really really well or really really badly but because you know it's either going to go really well or really badly it, it just makes it a, a fun ship i suppose it's if you if you hit anything it's exciting and if you hit more than one thing it's it's amazing because it just shouldn't be able to but it just works and i really do love that ship <laughs> Okay, let's look at the second part then of that question. What would you name a ship? Um, whoa. HMS Get Wrecked. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> honestly, like, I, I, I obviously, I, like, I am British, and don't get me wrong, I can ice now, sounds awesome. Sean Host, probably my second favorite, my, probably my favorite ship to actually play, not like my most, the most fun ship. Uh, like the Hotnik, I I like the fact that the American ships are all named after after you know states. I think that's quite cool. But British ships have had some of the coolest names in the history of of naval warfare. So you got like Indomitable, Infallible, Dreadnought, Victory, Formidable, Renowned, uh, Invincible, Warspite, Courageous, and now we have HMS Duncan. Um, so, like, we've had historically all these sort of powerful, intimidating names, and and then we've we've just gone and called one Duncan. They might as well have named it Dave. So, if I could name a ship, and I'm assuming you mean in real life, it would be HMS Get Wrecked, because uh, it's sort of back to that sort of former glorious old pride in our navy names, which, in all fairness, I think every navy should have. Uh, sort of pride in their ships if you could add one thing to the game and one thing that you want to remove what would it be uh, i want to remove the abruzzi so nobody can ask me to play it ever again <laughs> and one thing if i could add one thing uh it what war game in sort of said months ago they kind of alluded to the fact that it would be coming which would be um HMS Minotaur. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm British. I, I like like cruisers, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I, I want them to add HMS Minotaur. Like the, it was when they had the dev on months. That was that was back last year. He sort of alluded to the fact that that HMS Minotaur would be coming, but we still haven't seen it, and it makes me really sad. Not just because I like British ships, um, but because honestly in the current like legendary tier we really need something like that because the alaska is the only cruiser and let's be honest it's not real good at dealing with dds because it's got quite a slow reload time um we've now got well three dds with a gear in so there's there's nothing legendary here that really counters dds and i think not only would it make me happy to have another British cruiser to play, um, but it would also help with the balance of the tier sevens too. So, I'm not just thinking of me. <laughs> well, I've, I'm, I'm not joking. It's, uh, this is like I've said to you in the uh, in the past. If if I was the king of England, I would have my sword all over your shoulders because you, sir, are a gentleman, a true gamer. And I do believe a lot of people will love you, and even more will love you in the future. That's a fantastically nice, lovely, kind words for you there. But I find it, I find it quite difficult to accept any form of um, sort of. 
I know that was borderline flattering. Um, I got, I'm, I'm going to bring one of my pies round for you now. <laughs> oh, thanks. Well, guys, thank you for joining us, and thank you, Hi, for coming and, and being on the podcast with us. And we'd like to have you in the future again, if you're willing. No, never again. I'm joking. I would love to join you again. Uh, thank you very much for. I feel honoured. Uh, to join the the ranks of uh, of the people who have already been on your podcast, I feel uh, feel legitimately honoured to have been invited along. Thank you very much. Um, I want to thank you guys on Reddit for the the, the, the awesome questions as well. I uh, I genuinely thoroughly enjoyed myself. It is our pleasure to have you. So, guys, this has been another podcast for World of Warships. Back to port. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>